to our 2021 series of Gardening with Richmond Garden Club. What a great time to start off this year with learning how to prune hydrangeas. Just following different gardening groups and different questions that come out, this is a real mystery to a lot of folks. So we've got Jill Wright, uh, she's the head of Pollock Park and a proud garden club member. She's going to show us proper techniques to get the best that you can out of the different varieties of hydrangeas. Welcome. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Linda. So, what tools do you need to start with? It helps if you have a small saw for getting right down to the bottom. And sometimes you might need a lopper and then, of course, your secateurs. Okay. Now, here's a branch that I've taken off. I've, um, and so to maybe make it a little bit um, easier to follow, we've put it behind the, or in front of the white, because it's a little difficult when you're looking at a video to see if you actually can see which branch is the new branch and which is the old branch. But this, you can see that this is the nice, strong new branch on the outside. And so what I should have done when I clipped this is I should have clipped the old one off right here. Linda, can you hold that good, good side? Yeah. So I should have clipped it like that and kept this one. But I went and clipped it here before realizing that I had this lovely new healthy stem. So all of this I didn't keep. It bloomed last year and all of the new growth, which is this dark stuff here, we didn't need because we had great long uh, new stems. And this was quite uh, congested and not needed. And this is your old wood. This. And then I have another example. Can I put this one down? Yes. This example is all old wood. So this is still alive. It still would produce maybe a small flower, but we didn't need it at all. It's very light color, gets clipped. And then this one is new growth, but look at how weak it is. So that got clipped, not saved. Okay, so it is confusing about how to prune a hydrangea. And that's because there's four or five different kinds and they um, are different and bloom on different new wood and old wood. And so we just have to know what uh, hydrangea you have and how to prune it. So we're gonna start off with the most common and that one is the mop head hydrangea. And it can be um, a mop head or it can be lace cap. Both of them are hydrangea macrophylla or um, it's the old-fashioned one, for sure. Now, we found in the park a perfect example of what it should look like. And the reason that this hydrangea has so much new, strong growth is because it didn't bloom on very much old wood last year. Because it had been pruned um, drastically, or a radical prune, and so it has all new um, canes. Um, this is what bloomed last year. Nobody's touched this bush, but it is the perfect example of a well-pruned hydrangea. So I'm just going to use the secateurs and we'll look at each one of these stems. What we're looking for is the dark wood. If we see lighter, like down here, you can see the lighter color. That means it's um, a two-year-old wood or even older. So I like to have all of these buds on the tip and see we've got buds all the way down. This is going to bloom beautifully. But let's look at what bloomed last year. So here we go. We've got a, a branch back here, but we've also got a rhododendron. So we don't need this branch because we have a lovely rhododendron uh, right here. So we're going to cut this one. We're not going to keep it. Even though it's got good new growth, we're going to cut it right at the bottom. 
and we don't need this one. We're going to cut it off there. This one is very weak. We don't need it. Okay, so we have too many um, stems in the middle. So let's take this stem out because I've got a nice thick stem here, a thick stem here, and a lovely thick stem here and here. So we don't need this one. Let's take this one out. And I'm gonna go right to the bottom and try not to get rid of any buds as I'm going down. And I'm gonna take it down, cut it off. I found another one, another stem that can come off. It's a little weak. There are much better stems close by that are thicker. So let's take this one off and we're gonna go right down to the bottom. So these would have been flowers, but the stems are a little bit um, smaller and we had old wood and we want to rejuvenate our shrub. So that means we want to cut some of the branches out. Now this one in particular, as I said, was rejuvenated last year. So it doesn't have much old wood in it and it looks lovely. So this is the look that you're going for. Let me just tidy up and get rid of these. And there, look at those two buds underneath there, right where my clippers are. Isn't that beautiful? So that is the look that we're going for, for a mop head hydrangea. One thing to know about hydrangeas is we have to be careful about what the pH of the soil is. So how acidic is it? So if it is um, around 6.5, you'll get blue flowers. And if it's higher, more alkaline, you'll get more of the pink or the red. So on the old fashioned ones, it, you do need to have acidic soil to get a blue flower. Okay, our second uh, kind of um, hydrangea is the smooth hydrangea. This one is Annabelle. So it's that nice big white, flower that you see and um, the botanical name is hydrangea arborescens smooth hydrangea now there's a new one out uh, that's called incredible b-a-l-l -L at the end and it has stronger stems but you can see this has a different form it suckers so we've got quite a wide shrub here this is going to bloom from new growth this year. So totally different from our mop head hydrangeas. So you would cut this one down to the height that you want to um, have the new growth uh, reach for your flowers. So Gary, this is Gary's uh, corner of his garden and he's pruned it to here. So that means that his flowers will probably be up here. But you could prune it much lower. You could prune it down to the ground even, or to a foot or to 18 inches. It just depends where you want your flowers. Now, the nice thing about this hydrangea is that you can um, plant it in the shade. I have seen some lovely uh, Annabelle hydrangeas on the north side of properties. So that um, um, all hydrangeas need to have a little bit of protection from that hot afternoon sun. So they love morning sun, don't want hot afternoon sun, but Annabelle can handle shade. So when you look at this, what would you do? Some of you might lower it. Some of you might keep it just right where it is. But when I look at what's happening over here, we've got Annabelle hydrangea growing right into the hellebore. So I am going to just clip a few of these off because all of these are going to have the flowers quite far out. So I think we want our flowers lower at the front. So they might look dead, 
but they all have a nice little green inner part of the stem so you know that this is quite healthy so we have quite a lot of stems in this hydrangea so maybe thinning would be a good idea because it's quite congested so if I was to do any more pruning on this I would take some out right to the bottom and leave um, enough to get a good flower but um, I think it could be thinner we've got the oak leaf hydrangea and this one uh, holds its leaves much longer and they um, are beautiful fall color and even into the winter this time of year we're in um, the latter part of March and so now they are uh, finishing they're dropping off and the new leaves are getting ready um, to come out so for the oak leaf hydrangea you really just need to prune for the shape and um, tidying up some stray branches. But there's not a lot that you have to do on an oak leaf. Mainly, I just leave them alone and only cut them if you need to. And in the summertime, if you've got them um, falling down because the weight is too heavy, uh, you might want to take a few off the bottom. But you know what? This one um, was donated and it's been in the park for only a year. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let it um, grow this year and it'll bloom profusely and have those lovely oak, she oak shape leaves. The flower on this one is more of a cone shape than it's not um, similar to a mop head. It's more like a, a cone and it's lovely white and usually fades in the during the year to a maybe a pink or a, more of a rosy color but starts out white. So oak leaf hydrangea every garden should have one. If you don't have room for this size of a hydrangea you can buy small ones and one of them is called munchkin. That's what I have in my garden at home. And it's just uh, grows maybe a foot and a half uh, tall, but looks exactly the same, but in miniature. For our fourth hydrangea, we've got hydrangea paniculata. So this one blooms on new growth. And look at what an interesting trunk this one has. This one's old, you can tell. Certainly uh, seen many years. It blooms profusely and some years it gets pruned, some years it doesn't. So what you would want to do with this is you'd have to make some major, major decisions and you could spend all day pruning this one. Um, but the long and short of it is is these are last year's growth and they will all bud and we want to take them down to a certain so the bud is here and we want to take this stem down to here and that makes when you've got the big blossom this is going to be stronger than if the blossom came up the end of one of these long um, branches. So, you know, maybe we don't want that one at all. And we don't want the end pruned like that. And then we would take this down to this one. So we've got one bud here. We've got two buds here. And where should we prune this one? Let's go right here. So that's how that one would prune. Now you can decide whether, you know, if we have a path right here, is this one coming out too far? So we could at some point say that this whole stem, if it um, is in the way, we could cut it back to here and then have them arch more like that. 
and it's just a personal decision of how you want your hydrangea to look but just remember this is all new growth and you just reduce them or take them right off so we're going to talk about a younger version of the hydrangea paniculata this one is our very favorite in the park it's called pinky winky and so it is a much younger version you can tell by the trunks that it has the inkling of being that naughty um, crooked Z kind of, of uh, branches but you can see it's been it's much younger and so you can see how tall this one is and it starts out white and goes to raspberry red and look at the size of the flowers now these are after they've lived through a winter actually in the um, growing season they're much larger and it's our very favorite so we need to make sure, because the blossoms are so large, we need to make sure that the stems are strong enough to support the flower. So we would cut this one down to there, and this one to there. And then we're gonna leave this one, but cut it, the buds just right below my pruners. And we'd cut that one like that. This one I'm gonna cut right off because we have too much stuff in the middle here. So we'll cut that one off. So we're thinning it out a bit. And you can see that it doesn't show any signs of life. And remember the mop head had those big fat buds? So this one is the paniculata and it doesn't come out for probably a couple more weeks or even three weeks. It's very, very late. People think it's dead. But all you have to do to see if it is still alive is take a little scratch in the stem and if you see green it's alive it's just not out yet doesn't leaf out till much later you can see that bud you can hardly see it interesting there is another form oh well there's several more forms of hydrangeas one that you may have in your garden uh, that we don't at Pollock, but you know what? I think we're going to add yeah. um, a climbing hydrangea because the climbing hydrangeas have those beautiful uh, flowers, much like a viburnum, and it doesn't need much pruning other than to reduce the size and to reduce a wayward uh, shoot. So not much that you need to do on a um, climbing hydrangea, but they're well worth having if you have a um, obviously you need a, a form for it to grow up. So there we go, we've covered those hydrangeas and um, best of luck with your pruning. Well this is very very valuable information and we thank Jill very much uh, who has definitely got the expertise on keeping our hydrangeas beautiful for us year after year. What you've had today is a very lovely tour of Pollock Park mid-March. So you get to see what's coming uh, in bloom, uh, what's kind of waiting for a little bit uh, in this beautiful park in the center of Richmond. I'm wearing green today because of course it is St. Patrick's Day, but we'd like to thank you for joining us and stay tuned for our next video.